see those ducks right there. Those ducks are eating some Goterran food. Goterran tearing the traveling trainers out here at Murphy Candler Park, feeding the ducks. You can tell they're pretty hungry. They're all coming over here, munching away. Ducks, or geese, I guess you could call them too. But I'm just out here right now, having a good time, enjoying the sun. Trying to feed these ducks some bread. I'm trying to get one of that white one over there. Can't get them. Some of them seem a little aggressive too. But um, yeah, these ducks know that tearing the traveling trainer only feeds them the healthiest of wheat and multigrain breads. You won't find white bread here, no sir. Only the healthiest options that tearing the traveling trainer provides just for these ducks. Hey everybody, it's Go Terran TV. This is Terran the Traveling Trainer here. I'm reporting to you off site on West Nancy Creek Drive's Murphy Candler Park here in the perimeter area in Atlanta, Georgia. Really nice park. I encourage you to come check it out. Anytime you want to do some duck feeding and walk in the lake. It's just really peaceful and tranquil and quiet out here. You can see there's not a lot of people out here at all. And so anytime Terran the Traveling Trainer wants to come and get spaced out, kind of like I just did, I come out here to this park, so go check it out. It's Murphy Candler Park off West Nancy Creek Drive in the Perimeter area of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, let's get into today's article. Uh, today's article is from Fitness Magazine by Peg Rosen. It's entitled, Six Health Lies Trainers Tell You, from March 27th, by the way. Uh, okay, I'm going to say that again. The title of the magazine, Six Health Lies Trainers Tell You. Um, let me go ahead and preface this by saying that you know me, Terran Traveling Trainer has a lot more integrity than going and bashing and saying anything negative or you know discrediting other trainers. There's just no sense to that whatsoever. So I do find the title of this uh, magazine a little bit abrasive. However, at the same time, uh, I can see their point. They're just basically trying to break down six exercise myths that uh, you want to make sure that your trainer um, doesn't uh, stray towards. And again, all I'm saying is, you know me, Terran Traveling Trainer is always saying great things, if anything, about other trainers especially here in the Atlanta area because I work with a lot of them. So let's get right into the six uh, exercise myths that they want to break down. The first one, to quote, heat and vigorous exercise help you sweat out toxins, unquote. Uh, so what they're getting at is, although, you know, when you're sweating, uh, you're not basically eliminating a lot of waste, more so than anything, you're eliminating water and salt. Uh, it's not going to do much for your cardio or your strength training to, uh, if you're sweating mostly, and of course losing weight too. Um, you know, the best thing to do in this case is to make sure you drink a lot of water, rehydrating. It's, like I said, it's something that I always tell you anyway. But nonetheless, sweating, if anything, the benefits of it is cooling your body, but that's about it. It doesn't help with eliminate waste too much. So just keep that in mind uh, next time you're going out clubbing and drinking and uh, you think it's a good idea to say, well, I'll just sweat it all out the next morning because that's not the case. And uh, trust me, that's um, Terran the Traveling Trainer knows that for sure. Um, the second one, uh, quote, the more limber you are, the better. What they're basically saying here again, they're not saying that flexibility is going to help with your cardio and your strength and uh, making sure that you're overall in better health. However, uh, having said that, you are in better fitness shape because the more flexibility you are, the greater range of motion you'll have. So um, that's why I'm always encouraging you to make sure that you're stretching before and after your workouts because it is important. There's no question about it. However, the correlation of it to uh, improve your heart health and cardiovascular endurance and muscular strength, it's not there. So. Uh, but you know that. That's something that's kind of common sense. But just make sure you're still stretching nonetheless. The third one here, a cool down after your workout minimizes muscle soreness. Now, um, granted, uh, whenever you have muscle soreness and fatigue and DOMS and all the, you know, kind of muscular lactic acid builds up, there's different kinds of, uh, you know, supplements that you can take and water and rehydrating and all that kind of stuff. But stretching is vital. And again, cool down is important too because making sure that you do cool down, I always say that, letting the body temperature uh, go back to its normal core temperature and then uh, making sure that your heart uh, rate and blood pressure decrease. It's very, very vital to do that. So, uh, however, it won't do much for muscle soreness. Muscle soreness comes from breaking down the muscles, contracting, and we know that. And again, that kind of correlates and ties into number two with making sure you're stretching. That's what we do. Uh, the more stretch, the more this muscle soreness will go away. However, uh, having said that, the cool down is going to help you just bring everything back to normal, and that's basically what they're trying to say there. Number four, you should replace your sneakers every six months to avoid injury. Uh, you hear that all the time. You hear people saying to throw away your shoes and then six months later get a new pair. And, um, you know, that's generally true for the elite athlete who's running miles, especially outdoors. However, uh, for most people who are exercising, like myself, most of my exercising is done indoors. 
you don't uh, accumulate the tread and amount of mileage associated with if you were outside here running out in the park as you would if you're doing it indoors on a treadmill or an elliptical for example so what they're basically trying to say is um, don't worry about having to buy shoes uh, every six months unless you're an elite outdoors uh, runner who's out here all the time running five six miles every day then yeah that probably is a good idea however if you're uh, an average trainer like me or workout uh, exerciser I would say that every 12 months would be more practical. Uh, however, there's nothing wrong with doing it every six months. Besides, if your fashion sense changes and your tastes, uh, you know, develop for something new, go for it. But otherwise, uh, save yourself some money and get some new shoes every year, like tearing the traveling trainer. Uh, number five, running gives you wrinkles because all that breakdown uh, from pounding breaks down collagen. Now. Again, this is definitely a myth. Everybody knows that. Uh, you know, the people who like to bash and talk negatively about running, uh, it's just not there. You know, the, the, the Cooper Institute, from by the way, which, which I'm certified is, they break it down very beautifully. So if you just Google Cooper Institute or go to cooper.org, they'll basically tell you all the benefits of the running. And that's, of course, endorsed by the man himself, Kenneth Cooper, the founder of exercise running, basically. And, uh, you know, just uh, you know that the running can always increase cardio endurance. It's good for you because it builds your heart strength and uh, everything else that it promotes so um, no way at all does it give you wrinkles or break down collagen so don't worry about that myth uh, number six and final uh, for the, all the pregnant women out there uh, pay attention please listen closely you should keep your heart rate below 140 beats per minute when exercising while pregnant while that used to be the norm that used to be the case for everybody um, you know the doctors are always saying don't go over the 140 beats per minute you have probably heard that before general rule of thumb is uh, for ladies who become pregnant as opposed to men who become pregnant just a little joke there April Fool's humor still no what I'm saying is for women who uh, you know when you become pregnant uh, you don't don't have to worry so much about that number 140 beats per minute for your maximum heart rate we've talked about that we know I'm always telling my clients how do you check your pulse check it with a carotid or a radial pulse and then you know whatever that number is that's your beats per minute you want to go basically to 65 to 80 percent of whatever that number is but don't go over 140 that used to be the rule of thumb uh, back in the 80s maybe some in the 90s but nowadays uh, just whenever a woman becomes pregnant it's she just wants to make sure she doesn't change her workout drastically for example if she's training and she's used to getting her heart rate up to 100 and 25 beats per minute and then all of a sudden she gets pregnant and then uh, two or three weeks later she starts getting heart rate up to 150 170 beats per minute don't do that don't in any way change your workout to increase the level of intensity like that at all whenever you become pregnant make sure that you're working out at the same intensity or less uh, before you became pregnant that's a great general thumb so for example if you were at 150 beats per minute and then you become pregnant I would say it's strongly advisable and okay to keep it at 150 or less that's fine just don't go up above that basically so to give you a little example there so that's it for me that's it uh, that's all I have that's from fitness magazine March 27th article so uh, hope that helps out a little bit there's always exercise myths that I'm always trying to break down for you myself but until next time I uh, hope everybody has a great week have a wonderful April have an awesome April have a that and until I see you next time it's your time it's your investment it's your life Taryn traveling trainer signing off now see ya